Hey there everybody. I am so sorry about the last video or two, um, either with sound issues or lines across the, the video, you know, like digital lines. I've had some issues. I have a new camera, a new mic, and I didn't use my mic the other day, and I have to use my mic with the new camera. It's just not the camera's not strong enough to pick up my voice because it's high uh, above me in order to get especially like large canvases like this that are 24 by 36 and I use older video editing software and it's tried and true for me and the newer stuff takes I spent two days trying to edit some videos and do some voiceovers and I just gave up and I did upload the one that had the voiceover that was not in sync and I couldn't get it to sync with the video. I tried for hours and hours and hours. So believe it or not, besides just doing a fluid painting, the video processing part is quite lengthy. It does take some time and effort and I do it for you. So today I am going to use all Deco Art products. Everything is the Deco Art Americana and uh, I always keep super large quantities of white. That's in a yogurt container. I have white in this bottle that's like a big drink bottle. I have white in my squeeze bottle. So the white in the bigger containers I do add a little water to. Other bottles I do not for deco art because deco art is pretty fluid and you don't really need to add water when you do a one-to-one -one ratio with Floetrol. So a flood Floetrol latex based. Make sure that you make sure it's water based and not oil based. I always go through this process in every video in case this is the first video that someone were to come across who had never experienced acrylic pouring before or seen it. That is the way I discovered it seven or eight months ago. I just happened upon Anne Marie Ritterhoff's YouTube videos and I binge watched and I fell in love with acrylic pouring and started it shortly after. So what I love about Anne Marie is she is such a sweet spirit and she is a good teacher and she's very specific about showing you things over and over and over again and so that is what I want to bring to the table. I feel like my art is inspired and art is my calling. It's my gift. I've been blessed to be able to do it for over 20 years and I have always painted with acrylic paints but the fluid art is my new found passion that I have just totally fallen in love with and that's why I want to share it with you because anybody can learn how to do fluid art from children to senior citizens and it's therapeutic for me, it's therapeutic for you. Uh, I've gotten so many encouraging comments and emails about uh, they do it because they're de depressed or uh, they have physical issues or limitations or illnesses that is what it's all about. That's why I'm here and that's why I share because I actually really do care about people and I want that to totally come across through my videos and I just want people to know that first and foremost I care about you and I want you to be happy when you're painting. The way I'm happy when I paint there's nothing like it. Your cares just kind of melt away and it's that time for me of kind of like heaven on earth is the only way I can explain it. I'm going to start off with the Deco Art paints. I'm not going to pull out every bottle because I have uh, probably over 16 colors mixed up and I'm not going to use every color in this video, but Deco Art Americana so you're just familiar with the look of the bottle 
and I list the colors that I use in every video below my in the comments and if you don't know how to find that on a laptop or desktop it's going to say show more and you click on that and it'll give you all that information below links to my Amazon recommendations a link to my website, a link to my Facebook group page, which if you're not a member of, come join because that way I can connect with you on a more personal level. If you're on a mobile device, it's just a down arrow. It's a little triangle that points down and you click on that and it shows you all that as well. And if you are a subscriber, click down on the little bell down to the right corner. I can't get my finger to show up right down there in the bottom right corner. <laughs> I'm so backwards when it comes to mirrors and things. If you click on the bell, you'll get notifications of when I post new videos. And I've gone past my 25,000 subscribers. I have that video that I posted that if you comment on that specific video, you have a chance to win a free painting. It can't be a comment on this video. It's got to be on the 25,000 subscriber video. So when I, just uh, very quickly, when I mix up my colors from DecoArt, I pour them into a cup that will hold twice as much as what is in this bottle. So if this is a two ounce bottle, I put the two ounces of paint in, I put the two ounces of Floetrol, I stir it up, and generally it's perfect consistency just that way. Sometimes if you use metallic paint, the DecoArt metallics, sometimes you have to add water because they're a little bit thicker in consistency and metallics are heavier and they will sink. So if you make them a little bit more fluid, add a little bit more water to metallics, then they'll show up better. So I don't add water to the regular colors. Then I use my spot on treadmill lubricant and I do a drop per ounce of paint mixture. So if I've got four ounces of paint mixture in here, that's four ounces of Floetrol and DecoArt paint, then I put four drops of silicone into that. That is what makes the gorgeous little cells that you see on my swipes and the beautiful lacing that occurs that's where those come from. People ask me all the time on my videos, how do you get those cells? I explain it to you in this video and I'm saying that with a smile on my face because I'm showing you how to do it to get your very own cells. You don't need a lot of silicone. You just need about a drop per ounce of paint mixture. Now if I use coconut milk serum which I absolutely love. I don't use it usually in my squeeze bottles. I use that when I want to do acrylic pours where I want really big juicy cells. That's where I use coconut milk. And with coconut milk, less is more. You get bigger, juicier cells when you use less of this than you think. So it doesn't take very much at all. So you take your paint and your Floetrol and your silicone and you stir it up and it doesn't matter how much you stir it. You pour it into your squeeze bottle and put the cap on. Shake it, shake it, shake it and you're good to go. I do shake my paints and that's what gives the smaller cells because the more you mix, the more you shake, the smaller your, your cells are going to be. Very quickly, I'm going to go through the colors very, very quickly. Also, people say they have a problem losing their caps, put them in a cup and then you won't lose them. Titanium white, lamp black, dioxazine purple, which looks black but it's a dark purple, purple rain, ultra blue deep. Desert Turquoise, Peacock Teal, which their color is lighter than this, but I add the Ultra Blue Deep and I add maybe a darker green like Evergreen or a Forest Green to make it much deeper and more vivid. This is Sweet Mint, Festive Green, Sour Apple, 
bright blue, primary magenta, which is one of their premium colors that comes in the tube. You do have to add a little water to tube paints in order to get the right consistency before you put it into your bottle. Two paints always require a little bit of water added to it. True red, bright orange, cadmium yellow, baby pink, carousel pink, vivid violet. This is teal mint. I was looking earlier and it's a little bit, bluegrass green is just a hair deeper. This is teal mint. Today I'm going to do a colorful swipe and I don't envision anything specific. I just kind of let my spirit flow through it. I go with the flow and kind of whatever happens and what happens on the canvas is the way I feel at the moment and the way I move at the moment. That kind of thing. I keep lots of damp paper towels and so forth around because after you swipe, every time you swipe, you need to clean your tool off so it does not make the next swipe have the color mixed in. You want a clean swipe every time. And this, this is acrylic, it's not metal. It's a pool trowel and it's in my Amazon link below all of my videos. This is stained. It's been washed, but it is stained. I have my three little handy plastic paint scrapers that you can get at any hardware store and they're also in my Amazon link. I have a straw, a skewer, a store card that I don't use anymore. So that's pretty much the basics. This is a 24 by 36 Arteza canvas. They are not primed real well. I'm kind of disappointed with the primer on them. It's not super white and it's not super thick, so you do need to lay down a layer of white to swipe on. I have done it on dry canvases before and so it is possible, but with Arteza the primer is not super thick and so I highly recommend if you're using Arteza canvases, that are the economy ones, that's the ones that Arteza shipped to me, you're going to have to add a good amount of white to the top because their white is not very bright, the primer is not very thick. I do go over the edges because with the swiping, it doesn't spill over the edges like a pour does, but Occasionally the design will drip or spill over the edge and so you want the same white on the edges that is on your surface so that the white is cohesive with each other and not two different colors of white and that kind of thing. So it never hurts to have your canvas totally covered even on the sides. I'm also getting a pair of gloves that I am going to put on here because I forgot and I am notorious for, well, you, when you are swiping and wiping your tool off constantly with the paint, your hands are going to come in contact with that paint and my hands get stained very easily, that kind of thing, so it's just easier when you have gloves on. I don't know where you live. I'm in North Carolina and today it is about 100 degrees. So it's extremely hot outside and the AC is kicking. I'm glad I'm inside to be honest. Some people paint outdoors. I don't know how on earth they do that. I would never ever do a fluid painting outside because of the weather, the wind, things dropping. I have trees around, uh, bugs, you name it, I would never pour outside. So I'm not going to get a perfectly level surface here. I've got a lot of white on here. I'm not even going to try to get it perfectly level. You can always fast forward through, I try to speed my videos up 
so that you're not watching for an hour, hour and a half, but sometimes I can't speed it up through some of it. So, and you can also just, I'm just letting, tapping my canvas a little bit, that's what's shaking the table. I am going to wipe my scraper off here. I do the pull trowel on the larger canvases, you know, a few times. I don't always use it for every swipe. I use different sizes. So you just want to have your tools cleaned and ready to go before you start swiping. And I see a spot I missed. So you just, you know, you just make sure you've got some pretty good coverage that you don't have any dry canvas exposed and that way as it dries it will level out with the flow trawl in it and then when it's ultimately dry the next day you can come back with the same mixture and do any touch-ups that you need to do where possibly the paint was not covering the canvas 100 percent or whatever so you can always do touch-ups on the white after it's dry. So I'm going to start with the peacock teal. Festive green. I'm not going to continue to say the colors. I'm going to just be quiet during this time. You can, you were given the colors at the beginning and you can figure out the colors as I go. I am not crazy about this right here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over it. I'm just going to leave it the way it is and come back over it. But notice that I'm not using a ton of paint either. But I want, I want this shape here to overlap the one I just did because I wasn't happy with the way the shape of it turned out. Sometimes you have to turn your canvas and I don't need the big one on this one. I think I'm going to use actually the medium sized one. Occasionally you're going to see me put some swipes on something like paper. Sometimes it's butcher paper, sometimes it's plastic. This is dry eraser marker, pay, uh, poster board paper. It's poster board with a slick side made for marking on it with dry erasers, the markers. And this comes in poster boards at Office Depot, I think is where I got it. So I cut it down to pieces and that's what I'm going to. Sometimes you'll see me swipe some colors because quite frankly, they're just so gorgeous that you just have to put them on something and save it. And I do save things like that for jewelry, things like that. So I gotta get my canvas back on the table. I don't want my paint sliding. I'm gonna we're gonna build something for my camera to hang from instead of on a tripod because the tripod takes up a third of my table because of the three legs. So we're working on that one. So I want these to be kind of multicolored. So I'm just changing it up every so often.
I don't like the way that came out either, so I'm going to take that off or try to at least wipe it a little bit. It was like super wet, almost like water at the top. One thing to note is don't get your bottles so full that you can't shake them because what happens is, you know, the paint or the flow trawl or something might settle and then you've got all that liquid coming out at the top. And that was the problem is um, the colors had settled. I wiped off a little magenta, so I'm going to put some of that back there.